Good morning, everyone. Boker Tov. This week's Torah portion is called Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah. And the opening verse begins by telling us that Sarah passes away at the age of 127 years. And the question is, how can we name the Torah portion the life of Sarah when it begins with the death of Sarah and the aftermath of her life? Furthermore, the Talmud says that Rabbi Akiva, the great sage, once said that there's a connection <coughs> between Sarah, the first matriarch, and Queen Esther. Because it says that Queen Esther, when she married King Ahasuerus, she reigned over 127 provinces. And the reason she reigned over 120 provinces is because she was a descendant of Sarah who lived for 127 years. And the question is, what's the connection between the life of Sarah and the life of Queen Esther? <clears throat> and the answer is that what these two great matriarchs and women have in common is that first of all, they were both royalty. The word Sarah means a princess and Queen Esther was of course a queen. But not only were they both royalty, they both are the ones who are responsible for the birth and the continuity of the Jewish people. Sarah, of course, as the first matriarch, gave birth to Isaac, which is the birth of the Jewish nation. But giving birth to the Jewish nation is not sufficient. It took Queen Esther's intervention to her husband, King Ahasuerus, to save the entire nation from the genocidal plot of Haman, who intended to wipe out and destroy the Jewish people. And therefore the reason we are here as a Jewish people is because of Esther and Sarah. Sarah gave birth to our nation and Queen Esther sacrificed her life, risked her life by going to the king uninvited in order to save her nation and indeed saved our nation. And that's why we are here until today, thousands of years later. And the inspiring message of Sarah and Queen Esther is, that it's dependent on the Jewish people in every generation to make sure that the birth of Isaac and the Jewish people continues from generation to generation. I say these words with a broken and a sad heart as just yesterday another two soldiers died defending Israel, one in Gaza and one in Lebanon, bringing the toll to 700 and 97 IDF soldiers have died since October 7th. Every one of these heroes gave their life to make sure that the Jewish people continue. They are modern day Queen Esthers because they not only risked their lives but actually sacrificed their lives for the Jewish people. And every one of us must do our part to make sure to follow in the footsteps of Queen Esther and in the footsteps of Sarah, our matriarch. And that's why the Torah portion is called the life of Sarah, even though it discusses the death of Sarah. Because what the Torah is saying is that yes, the physical life of Sarah ended at the age of 127 years old. But her spiritual life, her legacy continues until today, over 3,500 years later. And so to every one of these brave and courageous and selfless soldiers who gave their lives for the Jewish people, Tragically, they were taken from us at such a young age, but their spiritual life, their values, their ideals continue for each and every one of us and for all of eternity. And indeed, every one of these brave and heroic young men gave and paid the ultimate price so that we can carry on as a Jewish people. And we are forever indebted to them and carry their memory and must live up to their legacy and to their sacrifice by embodying and carrying forth the values, the traditions, the faith and the belief that they sacrificed everything for. It is dependent on us in every generation to preserve our ancestral heritage of Judaism. One of the beautiful young soldiers who tragically was killed last week in Lebanon. It was a 21-year-old soldier by the name of Ivri Dichstein. He was just married a year ago to his bride, his beautiful bride, Miriam. 
and he has been serving in as a commander in the Golani Brigade in Lebanon. Tragically, the news of his being killed by a Hezbollah terrorist arrived on Thursday, and Friday he was laid to rest by his beloved parents, his five siblings, and his beloved wife Miriam in Jerusalem. After the funeral on Friday, as Miriam, his wife, his widow, was going home, she received a message from a delivery service that there's a package for her. She said, I'm almost home, just leave it at the door. When she came home, she sees a beautiful bouquet of flowers and a box of chocolates waiting for her. She assumed someone sent it to her as an expression of condolences. But when she came there, she opened up the note and it was a note from her beloved husband, Ivri, who knew that he wouldn't be home for Shabbat and sent out this, ordered this gift for her for Shabbat on Wednesday, one day before he was killed. And there she is holding the last note from her husband, just minutes, moments after his funeral. And it's in the note, he writes to my beloved wife, Miriam, I am here out in Lebanon in the north and I am happy because I know that I am doing something meaningful and worthwhile for the Jewish people. I hope that this will be my last Shabbat in the field because he was hoping to end his Miluim service that Shabbat that week and come home and return to his wife. And he says, please smile and hold your head up high. Know that I love you more than anything else in the world. Love, Ivri. This is the love, the selflessness, the beauty of each and every one of these young soldiers who gave their lives following in the tradition of Queen Esther and Sarah our matriarch. Let us pray that this war will end soon. There will be peace in Israel and security for the people of Israel. And we as a Jewish nation will go on and live on as we have in every single generation. And it will be thanks to these brave soldiers that we are given the gift of life. Have a wonderful day.